Hello, my name is Wim Bauman, and I'm presenting this paper also on behalf of my co-authors Elizabeth Tatles and Katja Papas. We had one question. <clears throat> is it possible to construct kind of saisons, radial saisons, which can directly measure the correlation function? We came to this idea because in normal neutron spin echo spectroscopy you measure directly the energy transfer and you do that by measuring Fourier transform of the scattering function and that gives you directly the intensity as a function of a time. With the normal linear saisons as we know it you measure only one component of the momentum transfer of the neutron. So in a way we measure a projection of the odd correlation function of your material, which is not the Fourier transform, but the Henkel transform of the scattering pattern. I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. Uh, both techniques are based on the principle of Larmor precession. If you have the spin of a neutron in a magnetic field and it starts to process around this magnetic field and the total phase <coughs> will depend on the wavelength of the neutron, on the trajectory through magnetic field, the length fits in the magnetic field. And you can use that to do spectroscopy, which you have set up with polarized beams, you start precession. And you have pi flipper to effectively reverse precession in the second arm and the sample, pi of two flipper to stop the precession, an analyzer and a detector. Now, if you have inelastic scattering, then the phase in the first arm and in the second arm will be different due to the difference in wavelength. So inelastic scattering breaks the symmetry of the setup. You can express the amount of precession, uh, this kind of experiment parameters, which is called the spin echo time, and really has also the function of time and dimension, and the change in frequency of the neutron. Now, in the end, you don't measure a single precession, but you measure the spin echo amplitude polarization, and that's the average cosine of this precession angle. And that's nothing else than a Fourier transform of your scattering function, which is kind of intermediate scattering function, only depending on the time. Now, with the normal saisons as we know, there are all kinds of variations on how to realize it, but in principle, they have precession regions with tilted interfaces. There's always a kind of gradient in the precession as a function of height in one direction. And what you measure in this case, if you'd have a direct beam, then the precession here will always be equal to one hair. But if you have elastic scattering, and then one component of it, in this case called the X component, that will give you a change in pass length, and that will give you a phase difference. You can express this as a length scale, the spin echo length, times the wave factor transfer in the same direction. And what you now measure, cosine transform of only one component, which turns out to be for isotropic scattering, a Henkel transformation. And it means that you are only sensitive to the X component of the correlation function in your sample. So we were wondering if it's possible to make more radial symmetric setup, where you measure directly the total momentum transfer Q, and then you will need complete radial symmetry. And Zhao proposed already to use cone-shaped field boundaries, to encode the trajectory of the neutron. And uh, well, after that publication, well, people didn't pay much attention to it uh, because it's very difficult to realize something like this. It is uh, really difficult. One of the problems with Pineco sounds is that you need to create tilted uh, boundaries for your precession. But now it became this idea to use uh, kind of Fresnel coils. If you have normal uh, neutron spin echo, there are Fresnel coils to uh, take into account different paths that you can have, that you always get spin echo. And then you have windings like this in a hyperbolic way. 
and you can uh, create extra position based on where you go through your curl. There are also shifters, linear shifters that are also sometimes used as kind of corrections to align your spectrometer. But now if you wind them in a linear way, then you can get a magnetic field integral with this shape. And that's exactly the same effect as if you would have cone-shaped region for your precession. And you can get with normal currents, the kind of currents that you can use in Fresnel coils, a pretty nice line integral, something like the order of magnitude of a millitesla meter. So that's not bad. So now we propose an instrument like this to get such an uh, instrument. Uh, you can do it in a linear way, then you would get the normal seasons. This could be an add-on to a traditional neutron spinaco spectrometer. And that would be really nice with the neutron spinaco spectrometers. They're usually positioned at very intense beam lines with a huge area. Uh, big samples, having high intensities, long wavelength. And that's a bit different from the Spinaco Sans instruments that have been built up to now in Delft at ISIS and as Adam and Indiana, Oak Ridge, Kachina. So this would give other options for Saisons. But now let's forget that ID. This is possible. But now let's look if it's possible to get radial Saisons. Now the first question is if you would build a setup like this. Will it be possible to get the Spinaco? It's not as obvious as with the linear seasons. What you want is a Spinaco for the direct beam, independently on how you go through the system. It will have a phase change only of zero. It might be needed to have a sample pinhole. And this will be a geometry with the currents in which you mimic this setup. Now, to calculate it, you will get a precession that will depend on the position where the neutron goes through the shifter. Now, you can completely define the trajectory of the neutron by the radius which it goes th through the shifter and which angle with respect, for example, to the x-axis. And now, if you define one position, and another one somewhere around in sample. Then you need only two of these positions, since the neutron's going in a straight line for the direct beam, to calculate all the phases. And that's what you have done. If you do it, and we took one position at sample shifter four, the other one at sample, and you have to calculate this integral. And then you can look if it's possible to get Spinaco. You can do it for different sizes of the pinhole at the sample position. And this was the outcome. Here you see the polarization of the Spinaco as we calculate it for a different currents through the shifter curls. It would correspond to a certain Spinaco length that you could reach, somewhere between half a micrometer and two micrometers. And as a function of the pinhole at the sample position. If your pinhole is very small, less than uh, one millimeter, the radius, <clears throat> you get a perfect spin echo. And if you make larger, then the amplitude will start to decrease. Uh, and on the one hand, you would like to have high echo, so you want to have a small pinhole. If you do that, then you lose also intensity. So this is not a complete picture. Uh, if you define a figure of merit, for example, the polarization squared times the intensity. And the intensity is going with the area of the pinhole divided by the polarization squared plus one. Then for the figure of merit, you get a peak somewhere around a radius of this pinhole of five millimeters. And that's uh, quite a nice, pretty uh, big beam, which you would get still pretty intense spin echo if you do that uh, neutron spin echo spectrometer. So that's good news. So in principle it will be possible. Now the next question is what will you measure? Will it indeed be kind of 
we do radial saisons. So now we did calculation. We did it using an infinitely small pinhole sample to make it possible to do calculation. And then you define the starting position of the neutron trajectory. And then the final one where it's being scattered to. So then you get deviation. And then you can calculate total precession based on all the intermediate points, what kind of precession the neutron would get. Now if you calculate it, then it turns out that only the first radius and the final radius are of, of importance. So that way you relate precession to the trajectory. Now the second thing you have to do, that's to relate the wave vector transfer to the trajectory. Now if you look at your incoming Q and your outcoming Q, then you can decompose it into the radial part and the complementary part. It's not completely tangential, but close to it. And now you can imagine that since precession only depends on the radius through which you go through a shifter, only this radial transfer, the red part here, is important for the amount of precession you will get. And the complementary part doesn't matter. So now we can relate the precession to the wafer vector transfer. And then it turns out that again, the precession is proportional to a spinnacle length and only the radial part of the wave vector transfer. We don't see the other one. So in a way, mathematically, it's completely equivalent to linear saisons. If you now look at the kind of parameters that you can have at the uh, neutron spinnacle spectrometer, this current you can have through the current sheets, and the wavelength and the distances, then we think you can reach spinnacle length of something like 200 nanometers up to 2 micrometers, which is uh, pretty nice. Now, we did calculations for the kind of correlations functions you would measure. And you see here some of the calculations and the solid line, that's what we expect for the radial saisons. We compared to the analytical ideal function of linear saisons, which is the desk line. And here you see for the pretty big particles, 2 micrometers, 1 micrometer, 0.3, they pretty much overlap. But for smaller ones, something like 100 nanometers, you start to see deviations, and 60 nanometers much stronger. And that's due to the finite acceptance angle that you will have due to the finite size that you can have for the uh, shifters. There we took a radius of 20 millimeters, and it's just an acceptance angle problem. So to conclude findings, there's not really any difference between linear saisons and radial saisons. You still measure only one component of the wave vector transfer. And now can we understand it? Well, with the neutron spin echo, you measure the energy transfer, and that's a scalar quantity. With saisons, well, it turns out you can measure only one component of a vector. But again, it's only one component, one scalar that you can measure. So it's need one component only of this vector that you can measure. Now, what can we conclude from this? There's no difference between to the two methods with the kind of signal you get. But on the other hand, it would be very interesting to use these linear shifters as an add-on to neutron spin echo spectrometers to yield uh, saisons. The properties of these instruments are very different from the dedicated uh, saisons instruments. If you want to know more about it, then please wait for the publication of this work in the Journal of Applied Crystallography. It will come out later this year. I would like to thank you for your attention.